Talk to me then about the volatility that we've seen because there were like two schools of thought. You got the Morgan Stanleys of the world that are like, we're just in this correctional phase here. It's a mid-cycle transition. Then you have the JP Morgans, which is guys, you want to buy the dip. Where do you sit? I, I don't want to say I, I sit closer to JP Morgan, but somewhere in the middle. I mean, <laughs> it, first of all, let's look at what actually set this thing off. The market volatility really started on September 22nd when Jay Powell signaled that they were likely to taper starting in, in November. And if you look at, you know, you got a 20 basis point rise in interest rates, and then you started to get chopped up in this market, up and down, up and down. If you look at the last time we had a large rate increase was last November, but that was a very different setup. We had the vaccine announcement, and we were passing um, additional stimulus measures, and interest rates were going up because the market was seeing better economics. Now we're starting to see some weaker economics, and we could talk about that, but, but on a weaker backdrop, you now have the Fed saying we're going to taper, and that's what's pushing up interest rates. So the cause of the rate rise is really the big difference between now and a year ago. Okay, so let's say that, that we're seeing, we see rates continue to go higher from here. Um, that we get a decent number tomorrow, the taper's <coughs> on track, uh, we see this inflationary story persisting. It was interesting, the Bank of England's new chief economist talking about it lasting longer, mm -hmm. uh, and rates continue to climb. But this is, this is cost push inflation that effectively is moving this. Jonathan, where do I want to be in that scenario? Right, so if you assume that the interest rates are, are going up because you have a healthy economy and not because the Fed is acting in a, in a more hawkish way. Um, you want to be, first of all, you want to be long stocks because a better economy is good for the market. And you want to be in cyclical companies. These are companies that are more economically exposed. Right now, they're trading at a huge discount to technology and they're delivering better yep. growth. The, the value benchmark is expected to deliver faster EPS growth than the growth benchmark each of the, uh, the next four quarters. So good economic news really pushes that value trade hard. Jonathan, what the, even if you think the debt ceiling is a non-starter for you as an equity strategist, it does bring up the question of where do you hide, where do you get a little safety if you need it? Oh, uh, well, well, it depends. First of all, if you think things are really going to go wrong, then the, weird, the strange thing is you have no choice but to go into U.S. Treasuries because for all of this hoopla um, about us potentially defaulting, which we're, net, we're, we're just not going to do, um, the, the Treasury is, is still the safest place on, on, on Earth. But uh, within equity markets, you would buy consumer staples and health care. But, but like, like you said, Alex, I mean, we've been looking at this for, you know, for the last decade, where every couple of years there's this debate and everybody predicts the end of the world. And, at, you know, at the end of the day, uh, folks in Congress basically make this go away. And, and that's what equity investors are seeing. Bond investors are much closer to this and, and watching every move. Equity folks kind of roll their eyes and say, come on, we all know that this is not going to happen. And let's, ju let's just get back to things. So if you look at the market risk, I think the Fed tapering is a market risk. I think the jobs report tomorrow is a market risk. Earnings season is a market <laughs> risk. But, uh, but, the, but the, you know, the debt ceiling, probably less so. Let's talk a little bit about what's going to happen with earnings. I, I, this is going to be the next challenge that we face. We seem to be moving maybe beyond the energy crisis, maybe we're moving beyond the debt ceiling, or we've just parked both of them for the time being. Who knows when they're going to ultimately come back. But earnings are next, and that is certainly something that we need to think about post-payrolls. Jonathan, what I'm trying to work out is there's all this pressure in the middle of the P&L. Margins are going to be squeezed, we know that. But my question to you is, is the top line going to be strong enough to compensate? So first of all, I'm going to disagree with, with the way you're talking about this and the way it's being characterized. Margins aren't being squeezed. Costs are going up. And if you have your costs go up, but you're able to pass those costs on, you don't get a squeeze on margins. You get a squeeze on costs. And the thing which people forget is that a big chunk of the cost of big public companies are fixed overheads. They lease equipment, they have uh, you know, equipment that they depreciate over time, and those don't move up and down with the, with the cost of oil or labor. So in an inflationary environment, if you look at the last five quarters, we've seen enormous earnings surprises. The average company beat by 19%, and almost all of that surprise was on the margin line, even though costs were rising. So. 
Um, yes, companies are going to complain about costs, but I think we're going to be surprised that margins are going to expand this quarter, not go down. Um, hmm. And I, I agree with you. Actually, actually um, I think the question is how strong the, is the revenue line? Um, yeah. So how strong will the revenue line be? Because um, some say that instead of being a cost push inflation like I was talking about, it's a demand pull uh, inflation story, that the demand is just really there and the demand destruction hasn't been happening yet. And you can see some of that in the survey data, like the services and manufacturing data. When do you think we might see that kind of demand destruction or do we not at all? Yeah, I don't think, Alex, it's, a, it's the, well, there's two issues. But one is you talk about something where because prices are higher, I say, yeah, you know, I don't want to go out to that restaurant. It's expensive. I think the bigger issue is I want to buy a car and there's delays. I can't get delivery of it. So there's demand for the vehicle. There's demand for me to go on, on, on vacation. There's demand for me to go and, and spend. And the delivery is, is backlogged. And I think that that's probably what's going to hold um, things back. If you look at, um, and yeah. I pull this up regularly on my Bloomberg terminal, GDP now shows that the expectations for this quarter of GDP have been weakening a little bit. 